Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO. Today we'll be doing automatic payment run. In the last couple of training sessions, we have doing banking and in the last last one, we have did the banking configurations where we did tested all the configuration and the, the unit testing part. And in the last session, we did the check management. Today we'll be doing the automatic payment. As already said and discussed in previous sessions, we'll be doing the overview and the business transactions in APP. APP, which means Automatic Payment Program, it is used for automatic payments in SAP. APP is used for making payments to vendors, employees and customers. In this, employees is somehow referred to vendors only because employees is again is a part of a vendor. Automatic clearing of open items with APP. Now moving on, on ahead, ex, uh, exploring in detail, APP, which is known as the Automatic Payment Program, is a tool that will help users to manage the payables. The purpose with the payment program, you can process international and domestic payment transactions involving your customers as well as your vendors and in this we can make automatic payments where we don't have to process the manual uh, manual processes at all the system is configured in such a way that the system will be making the payments automatically for the numerous or multiple vendors and customers at one go depending upon the due date and the payment terms and all so moving up to the APP part the business transactions before going for the payment program for making the payment we need certain open items for the vendors that means the invoices so if there is any invoices already done in the system we can process the payment run else we need to post certain vendor invoices so what you have to do is first of all you need to go and and post certain transactions with the transaction code FB60 for vendor invoices so that certain open items can be done can be uh, created and once that has been done we can check the same with the vendor line item display and then we can move for making the payment because you cannot make the payment to the vendor until there is any invoice or any open items standing in their ledger account so let's move to the screen and check whether there is any pin any vendor invoice is there or not so FBL 1N suppose the vendor which I am taking right now is seems slightly working slow so we'll be selecting the company code so we'll be doing the APP run in the company code 1000 and the vendor I would be taking is suppose 2070 and if we execute this we can see that there are certain open items standing in the books so there is a there are two basically two open items and if you want we can see the document type so as to identify whether these are actually vendor invoice invoice has been post so we can check the document type and you can see the KR is there KR basically means the vendor invoice or even we want we can post one more invoice over here let's move and make certain more invoice postings and then we can process the payment so the vendor is 1070 and uh, suppose I have been taking these things The similar manner you need to do your invoice posting in your system for the company code and accordingly you need to process it so okay
there are certain fields which are mandatory which need to be filled over here so just filling up those points reference field one two three invoice um, amount over here you can take the next is the text take vendor invoice we can even take the text away as vendor invoice and now so we can simulate this particular invoice now and we can check the invoice uh, is been preview has been generated and we can post it and the invoice has been generated now we can check the same in the in the FBL 1N report with refreshing it and you will see that one extra line item has been generated so now once a document has been generated you need to check in this that whether there is any payment method been assigned or not if not you need to assign the payment method over here with change document the payment method we defined was C that is the check that is what has to be assigned over here and now we can go to save option in it and now the check method has been assigned you can check the other invoices on double clicking on them and you can see the payment method is already defined and even the third one there is the check payment method is already defined so you found you need to have those methods assigned to them or they could be one of such way out another way out could be you can directly assign it to the to the vendor master account as well so once these have been assigned now we can move to the payment process so now we have completed the first two points that is fb60 we posted one invoice on the vendor account 2070 and we checked the vendor line item display that is the vendor ledger account as well that the invoices are there and the payment can be done for the vendor so now we are ready to go for APP that is automatic payment run F110 so now moving on to the screen to F110 slash and F110 enter you can see the screen this is automatic payment transaction this automatic transaction screen uh, is very important in many of the client processes their payment with this particular method so as to reduce their efforts their time and their cost so in this first of all we need to do is we need to define the run date and the identification run date is recommended to be the actual date when the program is executed however its main purpose is to identify the program run that on which day the program has been run and the second field that is the identification is used to differentiate between the different program runs which have the same run date so it may be that in the same day there are a couple of different program runs or automatic payment run have been done so to identify them the identification field is been kept so suppose we take the payment run date the run date has to be today's date that is 22112014 and the identification suppose I can take up is is uh, suppose I take 1000 just my company code is 1000 so I assign the identification is 1000 or if you want you can have your own identification whatever you want to so that you will be able to identify that easily so once we have assigned these two things now we can click on to the enter and then we need to maintain certain parameters on the basis of which the system will process the payment so the next thing which we need to do is we need to go to the parameters in this screen this parameter is very important the parameter is the one which decides who is going to be paid what payment method to be used to be for the payment process it could be check it could be wire transfer it could be RTGS or it could be anything else when will they be paid which company code to be assigned for the payment or to be considered for the payment how are they going to be paid so to begin with all those things 
First, we need to assign the run date and the identification date. Once that has been done, we move to the parameter from the status. And you can see the posting date is already been mentioned over there. The system takes the run date as the posting date. And now the parameters will be filling is the first which company code will be considered. So I would be making the payment run that is automatic payment for my company code 1000. So I took the company code 1000. You can take the company code the code your company would be having here you need to maintain the check method by which mode of pay you would be doing the payment it would be a check it could be a transfer it could be um, it could be a different method of payment so my payment method is C that is check now the very important part is next is the next payment date this is an important question which has been asked in many of the interviews as well at times next payment date you have to fill this is a mandatory field which has to be filled and it has to be at least two days from the run date so i take the next payment run to be 24 11 2014 now the question raises why there is a need of having a next payment date the reason behind that is when the system processes the payment for the vendors or customers the system checks that what is the next payment date is and before that whatever is the payment due for the vendors or the customers system selects all those documents for the payment processing as on the run date so in case there is any payment due on 23rd of 23rd 11 2014 the system will process that on 22 11 2014 that's why because the next run date will be on 24th 11 so that is the reason behind that the next is now you need to select the vendor now you can you can select the whole vendor in one go while putting the range from and to so that all the vendors if any document any payment is pending against them they will be processed if their their invoices are due in the system or if you have some selected few vendors you can go to this multiple selection and you can assign your vendor list over here they could be different vendor codes so those vendor code will be put up over here that can be copied over here and you can execute that and then those vendor can again be processed the similar case is with the customers so what we will be doing now is we will be processing at this point of time for one vendor and we'll see how that one vendor payment is processed very similar to that all the other vendors and customers payment will be processed so i will be taking the vendor that is 2070 i will be putting on both the side 2070 because i just want to process for the vendor 2070 only so this is what is your parameter which has to be filled for whom you will be processing the payment which is the company code from which it will be processed what will be the date what is the method of payment so these are certain things which need to be filled and that is why you need to have this parameter option over here so once you have filled these options now you need to go to this additional log in the additional log you need to select the first second and the last one and then again you need to take the vendor over here 2070 as we are right now processing only for one vendor so these are the two things which you need to take while maintaining the parameter and then you can go and you can save your parameter over here so right now your parameters has been created as of now which will decide that with which company code which vendor what payment method and on which date will be processed now once this has been done the next step is proposal so on the main payment program screen after the parameters are entered and you can see the screen over here parameter have been entered after the parameter entered we go for scheduling the payment proposal to be created so we create a proposal the proposal will be created with the with the option over here schedule proposal And when we schedule the proposal, the proposal search for the documents and accounts due to be paid 
based on the criteria set in the maintenance uh, in the maintenance of the parameters which we just did so on the basis of the parameter when we click on the proposal the proposal search for the open items for the documents and accounts for vendors and which are due to be paid the system then group these items for the payment and ascertains the payment method is the one which is maintained in the parameter and the bank connections to be used if no valid payment method or <coughs> bank data can be found or even if an item is blocked for payment then those items are placed onto the exception list like for an example now uh, let's move ahead and we click on to the proposal let's create the proposal so I click on the proposal this will run the proposal now so we'll have to select the start immediate uh, mark over here select it now we can go to proceed when we go to proceed you can see the proposal is running when the proposal is running means the proposal is actually searching for the open items which are due for the payment so what you need to do is you need to again refresh it from over here so refresh this and you will see that the proposal has been created once the proposal is created means all the documents which has to be paid are been selected for the payment now we can go for displaying the proposal and can have a look at what are the different documents which have been selected for the payment processing so click on the proposal display over here on the screen click and you can have a look that the vendor 2070 has been processed and on double click on this vendor can find the line items which have been included in that particular vendor so there are three different uh, open item document which have been concluded for the payment in this particular vendor 2070 and the document type is KR which displays that this document is a vendor invoice is a direct FI module vendor invoice so now the, this is the document which will be processed and when double click on any of the document we will find that there is a pay option of payment block now payment block is something which is uh, whenever uh, it will be processed there may be certain payments which in which has been blocked uh, so that the payment cannot be processed again those documents so that can be looked over here so to by displaying the proposal we can analyze the proposal list where the users can edit the list to view the detail of a particular payment so you can have the details of the different invoices which will be processed for the payment even if you want we can change the payment terms in them so this is the payment block if we want to block any any payment which you don't want the document to be processed you can block that that particular payment as well how this is a display option so you cannot dis uh, change or edit in the display part you need to go back and then again you need to come back to the to the status page and now to edit the proposal you need to go to this edit proposal over here when you click on to the proposal edit proposal on this and you need to select the all accounting clerk and continue now you can find that there is a vendor again but now it is in the edit mode so double click on this and now you can double click on this and you can find that this is in the edit mode so to to make changes to this you have to go to reallocate when you go to reallocate you will find that there is a vendor method and in this you can assign your house bank as well so the house bank with which we will be processing the payment is you can go and we can select the house bank so our house bank as of now is Axis bank and the account key over here account ID is also been selected so you can even even go for the changes to be done on this particular page as well okay and in case you want to make changes to uh, you want to block that payment as well you can go over here and you can block that payment as well so now going back if you do go to the second line item and now suppose I don't want to process this particular document so you can go to block 
and in fact you can block this to the payment over here and you can select it and it will be stopped so this way you can go and you can process the payment so this edit can be done you can see that the first line we did the edit we assigned the new house bank and the account ID in that and now going back or you can save it as well the changes will be saved in them so the changes have been saved now going back you can see that there is again a green line over here that means that two red but green means this is the line item which will actually process for the payment so this green line is mean is will be processed and the red item uh, is the exception list you can see as I earlier said that any document uh, or any invoice that falls within the specific payment parameter will be processed for payment and for some reason which cannot be selected they will go into the exception list so the red the red mark over here is the exception list you can have a check why there is an exception because the line items in them you can go to them they doesn't have any house bank in them so you need to allocate reallocate the house bank in them then only they will be processed for the payment so if you allocate over here then it will be processed for payment as well so you can see that second line I again be changed and again you can select it so again the changes have been done and if you go back again you will see that one more line item will be added for green that means for payment process so now there are two line items have been included in this one and two which are ready for process for payment so because the house bank has been changed in them uh, for which we will be making the payment for so this is how you can edit your proposal list and you can select and deselect which you want to process and which you don't want to process for so this is how the payment items can be temporarily blocked in the proposal by manually assigning a payment block in them and can be processed now once the uh, the payment proposal has been edited and saved the payment run can be done so going back now you can find that again a new option has came up over here that the payment proposal has been edited because we have made the changes in some of the open item documents and we changed the house bank in them so once that has been done and saved then the proposal gets edited so the proposal is now edited and we are ready for the payment to run so now the the proposal list is final then these are the documents on which the payment has to be done so one that has been done now you need to go to this payment run so before going to that you need to go to your printout over here you need to select your own variant over here in this particular part because on the basis of this only the bank house bank is been selected and the check lot and check numbers will be assigned accordingly so you can select your own house bank over here oh, sorry your variant over here so if I select this variant over here in this now keep the cursor on this screen and you can you have to go to this maintain variants and once you go over there you can check that these are the different things which have been filled so you need to have the run date that is 22 the features is over here is 1000 that is the identification you need to fill the company code paying company code sending company code then the, you have to maintain the payment method that is C for check you need to select your own house bank so in the same way you need to select your house bank and your account ID with which you will be processing the payment and you will need to select your check lot at the same time as well so that the check number which will be used can be identified by the system after doing this you need to go below and you need to select the print control now print control there are four options in it one is to print check if you want to print the check you need to select the print check option over here in case you want to have the print advice as well payment advice against the payment made to each and every vendor you need to select this print payment advice notes as well and in case you need any any payment summary then you can go to this print parameter over here as well so right now we will be taking these two that is the print check and print payment advice so once we want to have the print we need to select the printer as well 
Now for printer you can go to options that what are the different printer options are available in the system so suppose I take it off and have a look there are so many options over there for the print parameter but out of these only one or two works for the printer so that is something which varies from client to client however LP01 is something which is standard SAP and we always use LP01 for the print control parameter over here so this is what you need to select that's it so this is what your variant has been created depending upon this variant this house bank will be selected and on basis of this your check number check lot will be picked for the payment processes and be on depending upon this check lot number the check number which have been assigned in this the check number assigned in this check lot will be processed and will be allotted for each payment made for the vendors so once this has been done you can save this variant so go to save option save so the variant has been saved as SAP12 now going back now we can go back over here again to the status save and now we will be running the payment run by which whatever the document selected in the proposal for payment will be processed for the payment by the system so once I go and click on this payment run over here we need to cross check each and everything carefully that everything has been done properly and correct so clicking on this parameter run now you need to see that this is a screen which comes up on on and you need to select this smart start immediately and once you click on this smart start immediately you can continue so enter you can see that the payment run is running that means whatever the proposal the documents which have been selected in the proposal they are been processed for payment and a payment document is generated per vendor wise so if there are suppose multiple vendors and every vendor has got number of documents pending for payment so for each vendor one payment document is generated for all the payment pending in that particular vendor and one consolidated amount check will be made on that so if there are four vendors so four payment document will be created and if suppose in four in any one of the vendor there are four invoices so whole four invoices payment will be made in one particular payment document as a accumulated amount so once this has been run now you need to go to the status so as to refresh it and once you refresh you can see now that the payment run has been created carried out so when it shows the message it also shows that the posting order one generated one completed so this shows that one payment document has been generated and it has been fully completed as well that means the payment has been successfully made so now once this has been done you can go back over here on the payment and you can have a look to your payment to run log or in fact if you want to see the payment documents you can go to this add it on the heading and over here there are three options parameter proposal payment at time it happens that something went wrong and we want to delete that particular part so you can go back over here payments and you can delete this output but once the document has been posted it should not be deleted in any how you can delete before the payment run you can delete the parameter you can delete the proposal until you have executed the payment run so to delete anything you can go to this proposals you can delete over here you can go to parameters you can again delete them as well and then again restart the whole process but once the payment run has been executed you cannot delete the payment run because the accounting document has been generated so let's go over here in the edit and go to payment in payment we can go to the payment list so click on the payment list it shows you a program you don't have to do anything you just have to proceed continue so this shows you the status of your of your payment run it says that 
the vendor 2070 and the house bank is this the account id is this the check that is c c means the check method and the check so these are the two invoices which have been processed for payment and the total payment against them made is 2123 so you can have a look that the payment has been successfully made and there is a tedious tax deducted at source is 21.24 this is the tax which has been deducted so out of this this much amount of tax has been deducted and this much amount of the payment has been made to the vendor so this much amount of check has been made for the vendor what is the check number that can be again looked in a while so what is the document number payment document number is reflected to you over here you can have a look this is the payment document number over here this is the payment document number against that you can see over here so this is your payment document number which has been processed for these two invoices so again this vendor if you remember had three invoices in them out of them two has been processed for payment because we made changes in them and we assigned the payment method we assigned the house bank as well so on the basis of that house bank the system has processed those two invoices only for the payment the one invoice which has not been processed for the payment that has been put in the exception list so how we can see that which was that invoice you can go to edit payment in that you can go to exception list again enter so in this it's not been reflecting as of now so that is something which can which we can go back and check in their vendor ledger account as well or you can go in proposal and you can check over here as the exception list as well so here you can see that this is the exception list over here this is the document number which has not been processed for payment you can see over here it's been written no payment so for this document no payment has been done for these two line items the payment has been processed with the bank the house bank is this without any problem so going back again so this is how you need to go back and you need to explore the edit and the payment options over here and this will let you know your payment document number your exception document in case any exception has happened and the payment has not processed for that particular part so once this has been done so now to print these things you can now you need to go to this printout over here when you go to this printout you will see there is an option coming up over here schedule the print why print because i need to print my checks i need to print my payment advice these two things can be printed once a job is created so to create the job we need to go to this printout click on that and it asks you for the schedule print schedule me print means when you want to print so i need the print immediately that's why i selected start immediately in the job name you can name the job like i can name it as 1000 this is the whole sequence first one is the transaction code the second is the date third is the company code fourth i have put up as 1000 my identification you can have something else by which you can you can remember i can check back the job so this is what you need to fill then again continue and you can see over here the print job has been scheduled so once the job has been scheduled you need to go to systems and you to your own job so this will let you know what is the job you just scheduled will be reflected to you in another screen so click on to the on job and once you click on to the on job you will find over here that this was the one which we just scheduled right now so we can click on to this and we can go to this spool so once you click on to the spool you will see there are two options reflecting to you these are the two options by which we have been able to take the print of the check and the advice 
so this is the spool by which you can take the print or you can select from here and you can directly take the print as well so this is what you need to take care of that the print can be taken through this job only so that is it all about the automatic payment run you need to first have some open items and you have to ensure that the open item doesn't have any kind of a block payment block so you need to take them off you need to check that the house bank the payment methods has been assigned in that particular items open items or the documents which you are processing for payment and if they are okay then when you create the parameters and in the proposal with the help of the proposal you can add it which document you want to process for payment and in case you want to restrict certain payment of vendors you can go and you can restrict those particular documents for so that they will not be processed for payment and once you have revisited the proposal that everything is fine and you have edited it well then you can save it and the proposal will be edited and then you can go for your payment run when you run the payment you will find that the number generated and the number completed will be very much equal to each other because that is what the same document number should be generated in the system so you need to cross check these things you need to cross check your variant that with which house bank you are meant you are going to make the payment the correct house bank has to be maintained that is a very important part else the things will go wrong that is it and once this all been done you need to schedule your job with the printout option where the job will be scheduled and then with the help of that job we take the print out of our checks and advices in the printer so this is what is the best and the simple way out of making the payment for huge list of vendors where the process could be more lengthier if you go for manual activities but if you go for automatic payment the things becomes much more easier to process so once this has been done you can go back and you can check the vendor ledger account as well that is fbl1n enter so you can go back over here 2070 and now if you process you remember that there were three open items in this now the open item left is only one because the two open items has been processed if you want to check what are whether those two you can go to this clear item and you can put the date of today because today only we process the payment so once you do the automatic payment run what the system does they it automatically clears the open item that is the pending item against the payment made to the vendor and it gets a complete item and that then it it get moved from the open item list to the clear item part so you don't have to go and you have to do these clearing activities separately that also is been done automatically by the system so now going to the clear items you can see these were the two documents which were been processed these two against these two this is the document which have been made and the payment has been made on the basis of this so you can double click on this this is the document against which the pay uh, this is the payment document which has been generated with the f110 if you want to check that you can go to this display document header click on this you will see that the transaction code f110 is reflecting to you the and the date and the time is also reflected to you over here so this is how things work out and if you need the details of check number and all you can again go to over here to the environment and you will find the check information on clicking on to this check information part so you can see the check information is also reflecting to you check number is there and the posting date and everything has been reflected to you so this is how you need to process the payment run in the system for wherever you 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 do this automatic payment process program it works the similar way there is no change in this it's the standard process to pro to follow with so that is it thank you